Israel has formally declared war on Hamas after a surprise attack on the nation on Saturday. The death toll has reached over 1,100 as of Monday morning, mostly Israelis. The fate of at least 100 hostages, including Americans and Israeli soldiers, is unknown. This could precipitate World War III. So where do we go from here? And how do we pray? This is Jennifer LeClaire, and this is Praying the News. We'll look at the situation as it stands right this moment, and I'll offer some prayer points as well. We're going to be hosting a 9-11 prayer meeting for Israel. You can register for that, and I urge you to get on a Zoom with me and pray at jenniferleclair.org slash events. We're in day three of Operation Swords of Iron, which began Saturday morning with Hamas's infiltration of Israel by land, sea, and air. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed to take revenge on Hamas, which is backed by Iran. Again, this could precipitate World War III. We all know Israel is surrounded by enemies on every side, but we also know that God has his eye on Israel. Nevertheless, this is a bloody and deadly fight, and many more lives could be lost. Let's listen in to Israel Defense Forces spokesman Jonathan Conricas, who offered an update late last night. Let's listen in. The, the picture and the situation in Israel is a dire one. There's still fighting going on in southern Israel. Our troops are still fighting and hunting down the last terrorists that are still inside Israeli territory. That is something that will take a few more hours or maybe even more than that. But at the end of that process, all of the terrorists that came into Israel, by the way, we assess that there were approximately a thousand terrorists who participated in yesterday's invasion of Israel. About a thousand bloodthirsty Palestinians who went house to house, building to building, in search for Israeli civilians, massacred, Approximately 700 Israelis have been killed, and that's civilians and military included, and uh, more than 2,100 have been wounded. Uh, unfortunately, there's a high number of uh, critically wounded people who may not make it, so unfortunately the astronomic figure of 700 dead Israelis uh, will not uh, remain that. It is uh, by far the, the, uh, the worst day in Israeli history. Never before have so many Israelis been killed by one single thing, let alone enemy activity on one day. And if you're Americans and want to compare this to something in American history, then this could be a 9-11 and a Pearl Harbor wrapped into one. As you can see, the situation is dire and the Israel Defense Forces are not backing down. So how do we pray? My colleague Rick Ridings from the Sukkot Hello House of Prayer in Israel offered this strategy. Here's what he said. Number one, contain and restrain. He said the Lord gave him a strong word for this season that we're to pray to contain and restrain regional conflicts so they don't escalate into a premature World War III that would greatly hinder the Great Harvest. He said we need to pray that this situation will be contained and restrained, especially that Hezbollah will not join in on the conflict and start firing rockets upon the north of Israel. He said pray also that Israeli Arabs will not continue to join in with isolated attacks on individuals. And he said to pray for great wisdom for the military and government leaders. Number two, he said the area surrounding the Gaza Strip needs prayer. He said pray protection in a special way over the most vulnerable areas close to Gaza. He says he's got a good friend who pastors a Messianic Jewish community where some of the hostages were taken. So he's asking us to pray protection for the hostages. Pray for the miraculous rescues of hostages that were taken by Hamas. You know, let's also pray for Rick and his house of prayer. It's at ground zero. He's literally holding down the fort. 
Intercessors, it's our obligation to stay informed and vigilant as this nightmare unfolds. We believe God's going to get the glory in the end, and he's going to show up strong for Israel like he did in the Six-Day War. Let's declare Psalm 91 over Israel and its people. And let's pray for the families who have already lost loved ones and for those who have been abducted and the active soldiers and the reservists who will be called up as Israel prepares its response in force. Beloved, let's keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Join me for a 9-11 prayer Zoom for Israel. You can register. It's coming up. Register at jenniferleclair.org slash events. Until next time, keep praying the news.